Okay, you click the video and you want to learn how the ADC in the Raspberry Pi Pico works. Don't waste time, let's start! Before we start with the cool coding part, we have to talk a bit about the boring theory. Yeah, sorry, but that's what we need for understanding it. I will try my best to explain it to you as fast as I can and you will learn a lot. So don't skip that part. It's mandatory to understand what's going on inside of the electronics. In our Raspberry Pi Pico, we have our RP2040, which has exactly one ADC, but it has five ADC inputs. One is used for the temperature and the other four are connected over a multiplexer to the ADC or all five are connected over a multiplexer to the ADC. The easiest way to describe the used ADC inside of the Pi Pico is to compare it with a balance white. So what we do is that we have some kind of unknown white and we have some counter measuring whites which are binary distributed. So what are we doing now? To figure out what weight we have, we just add those to the balance weight and add those counter parts or add those counter weights to the other side of the weight. And when it's too heavy, the weight will go to the other side. So what are we doing? We take the weight off and then we just write down what we did. And this is the way it works. If it's too heavy, we take it off. And this is exactly how the SAR ADC is working inside of our Pi Pico. The SAR, by the way, is meaning successive approximating register. And it's just meaning that we are getting closer and closer and closer to the final value as longer we are trying to do it. So the maximum what we can reach here is comparable with the weight. It's just the number of weights you have. And in the electronic world, this is the reference voltage and this gives you the absolute maximum. So don't use voltages on your ADC that are higher than your reference value because otherwise you will kill your microcontroller or you just get clipped values which you also cannot use. So be sure what you're doing there. If we want to build up a system like this now, we have to build something what is comparing the initial voltage to the reference voltage. And this is done by simply a comparator. And then we have to increase the voltage on the other side. So what we are doing is that we're using a digital analog converter to build an analog digital converter. That's weird. Or but it's the simplest way it is. And with this digital analog converter, we can just increase the voltage till we reach the voltage we want to have. So be sure that always when you have the highest or the heaviest weight or the highest voltage, this is what we will call the MSB, the most significant bit. And on the other side, the one with the lowest value will be called the lowest significant bit. That's important to know if you go deep inside the electronics, you always have to know where this bit is with the least or with the most significant. When we think now about the things we are doing when we measure with a simple balance white, we have to add another circuit because we are giving constantly new values to the ADC. And that's not what we do with a balanced white. So we are there just putting one value and then we measure. And that's the same what we have to do with the ADC. We have something what is called sample and hold circuit. And this is on the front on, of the ADC. And this is just doing what it is. It samples and holds the value. And this is important, otherwise we will get into measure failure and this we don't want. So the resolution we will have is 12 bit, but in MicroPython we get out 16. So just don't mix it up, that's just another interpretation of the 12 bit, so you don't get 16 bit out of that analog to digital converter. Another point you have to think about is the speed. The ADC is giving you 500 kilo samples a second. But you have to think about that you have the multiplexer before. So if you want to measure a signal, you have to think about the multiplexer and the maximum frequency you want to measure. So 
be sure that you are not too slow with that what you want to do. Okay, let's come back to our Raspberry Pi Pico. As I mentioned before, we have five ADC inputs on the multiplexer, but we have one which is just internally for the temperature and on our Raspberry Pi Pico there are just three available. So number four is used on the Raspberry Pi Pico itself for measuring the voltage of the system. We cannot use them for our project, but we can measure the voltage if we like to and learn something about it. For my setup I'm using a low pass filter in front of the ADC multiplexer input. The reason is that I want to avoid alias frequencies inside of my measurement and this is what I also mentioned to you. If you build a system, be sure that you use an anti-aliasing filter inside of your module. For my setup I will use a voltage divider and I will use a switch to change the voltage division. And I'm not using a pot because I don't like those things. I know a lot of people are using a pot inside of a tutorial but just believe me, a pot is just to be used if you have no idea what you're doing and I would always recommend you to think before you do something. And if you just use a pot to switch something on and off, it's just a waste of time because a pot is not stable and it will broke into your system. So don't use a pot, just use switches or something what is stable where you directly can calculate if something is working or not. Congratulations! You survived the theory! Now it's time to grab some coffee! And while you're waiting for your coffee machine, you can subscribe to my channel. And when your coffee machine is finished, lean back, relax and enjoy the practical part of the video. Cheers! Okay, now we got everything we need, then we can start with the software part. And the software is quite easy to use. So what we have is here that we just import from machine, we just import ADC and the pin. And for the example, I'm just importing time to use a sleep function. After this, we can directly define the ADC and in my case, it's on pin 28. And then we go into the while true loop and just measure the voltage or give the voltage out and for this we need to add some conversion and this is done by dividing of the 16 bits which we get out of the variable and multiply this with the value of the reference ADC voltage and this we give out as a string and just print voltage in front of it and then we sleep two seconds and see what's happening. So when I put the run button, I see that the voltage which we see is 1.7 volts. So this is what we calculated before. When I press now the button, I would see that the voltage will drop down to 1.15. And this is what we calculated for the button value. So it's working quite nice. Another thing I want to show you what I mentioned before is that there's another ADC on board. And to show you this, I'm just opening the schematic and inside of our AP2040, we have those four ADCs, what I mentioned before. And as you see here, ADC number three is connected over a MOSFET to a voltage divider. And this is going to the system voltage. And when we have now look where the system voltage is coming from, it's directly coming from the USB port over the V bus over a diode and giving us a system voltage. And those kind of diode, I don't know, maybe it's a short key or something else. So it's just some voltage drop. And yeah, we can use this one to measure now the system voltage. Okay, and then we jump back to our Tony. And what we have to do here is to copy those initiation line. So we just change here for pin 29 and give it the name ADC number two or something. And then we just copy that one here and say voltage system. And here we also change the number to ADC2 and then we go for it. And yeah, what we see is that the voltage is a bit low than that what we expect. And the reason is easy to answer. It's coming from that we don't have it taken into consideration that we have a voltage divider here. So we have to add this one 
and we just simply do it by multiplying this with 3 because we have here 100 kilo ohm and here 200 kilo ohm and this gives us a factor of 3 based on the ratio and yeah then we just simply run it again and we see we are close to 5 volts so this is what we would expect if we are supplied by USB so perfect all right now we come to the last point the temperature measurement and I just want to mention here that this one is not really accurate the reason is that we are using a DC DC converter instead of a voltage reference and we are using a diode instead of an NTC but for a first impression about the temperature it's okay so we can use it as a first try so go for it all right before we can start with the programming of the software we need for uh, measuring the temperature, we have to read a bit in the data sheet and this data sheet is explaining us how we can make the translation between the voltage of the diode where we have and the temperature. So it's explaining us that the normal temperature at or the normal voltage at 70 degrees is 0.76 volt and the slope of the diode is minus 1.72 millivolt per degree and with this we can create a formula for converting the voltage of the ADC to a temperature and this we do inside of the Tony so we just switch here and this is the same what I did here it's just uh, measuring the voltage of the ADC number 4 and then I calculate the scaled voltage, which is just the reference voltage and the resolution of the ADC. And then I'm getting a temperature by the formula we have from the data sheet. And then I can run the whole thing. So let's go. And then we figure out that it's just 14 degrees here in my room. Okay, seems like that I have a problem because I'm wearing a t-shirt at that cold temperatures. Or maybe there's something wrong within the measurement. So what I did was that I used the DC DC which is on the Pi Pico and yeah I tried to fix it at first I thought maybe I have a mistake in my code but I figured out that it's the same than other people use. Then I tried to use another Pi Pico which is new that gives me also the same temperature. So then I tried my Pi Pico W. This gives me the correct room temperature. And now the question is, where is it coming from? The answer is, I already give you the explanation within the video. The problem is that the USDC-DC converter on the Pi Pico is just not as accurate as we would need it for measuring temperatures. So I will quickly show you how to figure out what voltage you have on your Pi Pico and how to adapt it on your software. So let's go for fix it. Okay, how can we fix this issue now? We have to adapt our scaled voltage where we measure here to that where we have on the board and to this we just need to measure with our multimeter the voltage between the ground pin and the voltage reference. In my case this is 3.25 volt and then I can just adapt it here and rerun it and then we see ah perfect we are again at room temperature. So this is something I would recommend to you if you want to measure exactly don't use 3.3 volt just check what your ADC is doing. Okay now we got everything what I wanted to show you I hope you liked the video and if you do so here are some other videos you could also follow on. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Goodbye!